one of the folks will be in attendance there as a candidate for Jefferson County Commissioner out of the Shepherdstown District, Kara Key. She's with us in studio. Kara, good morning to you. Good morning, good Bill. Morning, Kara. Rob, thank you. And everybody listening, thanks for uh, taking the time to hear me today. How's your, <laughs> how's your door knocking going? It's going well. Busy. Uh, I've been teaming up. I was told, you know, you take good advice from yeah. people. They say, go with somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you're safe and go to as many doors as you can. So that's what I'm doing to doing during this campaign, my first campaign. What are you hearing as you knock on doors? People are wanting civility in mm. political communication, yeah, yeah. like this Doublefield Institute. Are you People, making that up? Or I know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to butter this guy up for a yeah. totally nice thing. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, people, people care about land use issues. I think they care about... Um, having a nine month wait list to get into a doctor's office. They care about um, 600 acres of solar fields. They care about um, a lot of high density coming into Jefferson County. What are we gonna do about our infrastructure? It seems like those are the common themes that people are, are upset about or concerned about. They wanna understand how I feel about everything and what we're gonna do to solve some of these issues. What can, uh, and, and development would seem to be right up the alley of the role a, a commissioner could influence, but my understanding is even with the zoning restrictions in Jefferson County, every time the county has tried to enforce a zoning restriction and it's gone to court, they've lost in the enforcement of that zoning issue. One, is my statement accurate? And, and two, what's I the remedy for that if that's the case? Because how else do you control development if not through a zoning ordinance? Right, and you need, so zoning is a good thing if it's done right. Um, we do not have a low density zoning ordinance in our county right now. We have residential growth, which is high density, RLIC, which can be high density. Um, and so I uh, joined the Planning Commission this past April, and one of the things that we discussed in the comprehensive plan, which I cannot take credit for, but I fully support it in the meetings, is the need for a low density um, residential. So like an R1, R2, R3 scenario. Okay, what do you mean by low density? Besides um, the R's, because we do not know what R's mean. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so for low density, it would probably, and, and the zoning ordinance has not been written yet. This is just, um, we're, we're um, updating our 2045 comprehensive plan right now but um, in some capacity I would imagine it would be between half an acre and one acre lots as opposed to townhomes that sort of thing um, but I would like to point out that mo about 80 percent of the growth of these subdivisions that are popping up in Jefferson County are actually within municipalities and we don't have oversight control over that development so that's actually you know within Charlestown Branson there's their zoning ordinance um, dictates what can be done there so um, is that on land they've annexed or was it already city land to begin with? Um, a combination, yeah. So some annexation over the past probably 10, 15 years, and then um, some that they've had, you know, that they've redeveloped. So I may um, have misunderstood you. I thought you said the zoning ordinance has not been written. I thought you oh, had a zoning oh, ordinance we do. in place for... We do. Yeah. Um, the low density okay. zoning designation. We currently don't have a zoning ordinance on low density residential. We okay. have a rural zoning, which is about 80% of our land in Jefferson County, um, but we don't have a low. So in other states and other counties, they'd have like an R1, R2, R3, for example, or low density residential, medium des density, high density, okay. or something along those lines. Um, so we actually just have a, a somewhat high, so it goes from that. And so so people in the county and what I talk about is we need um, better cohesion between our protected land and these high density areas. Mm. So we need to have that balanced middle ground. Um, and I think that would um, be a more respectful route, especially in our uh, backcountry roads, um, you know, not having high density um, in areas that don't make sense. The flip side, though, is uh, uh, economic growth. What would be the economic driver in Jefferson County? We need a commercial tax base. So as a Republican, uh, we need to ensure that we're not raising our taxes. We actually lose money for these high-density exactly. residential. Yeah. So uh, I took a tour with... I'll give a shout out to Mike Mood and uh, Delegate Joe Funkhauser, uh, candidate, Wayne Clark, uh, Daryl Coles. We all went and met with uh, Summit Point Training Facility, and they gave us a great tour for what they do. And they have um, a lot of uh, government agencies there. They have between 700 and 1,000 people there every day. 
they're a great driver for economic development. I would love to see more federal agencies here. I would love to see more government contractors here. We have a lot of folks that commute to D.C., Northern Virginia, and uh, I'd like to cut commuting times and increase live, work, play for our families so we can get off the roads. Hank, if you can put a Coast Guard office in West Virginia, anything is possible. And, you can. And also you have the, uh, the training center uh, yes. on um, a Scrabble Road. Uh, but that still hasn't answered my question. Uh, what would be the principal economic driver uh, in the county? What type of businesses are you recruiting? I would like to, I think tourism is a huge driver. Agritourism is a great, great start. Um, and that would also give some power to our ag agricultural properties. Instead of solar fields, how about we put in some wineries, right? Um, but we do need um, more services. We have Burr Industrial Park. It's uh, about half vacant still. Um, that's a great um, area that we could develop for commercial. I would say we need, um, you know, tech, good businesses, offices. We need, um, you know, light, light industrial um, distribution centers, these things that, that have good economic resources that could help our county. When we're, when we're growing residentially, which is good in some ways, we need to make sure that we're also offsetting that with more medical, um, more um, uh, a mixture of all commercial uses. But I would support government contractors, um, federal agencies coming here. Those jobs are high paying jobs. Those jobs are a lot of the people that live in Jefferson County use um, as their way of life and I think they would appreciate it. Um, so yeah, we got the Coast Guard in Kearneysville a long time ago. Guarding I think, the borders, baby. I, yeah, I think like <laughs> I think Mr. Lowe was part of that maybe um, in some, some degree. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we have uh, the IRS there too, but having more, um, that's on the Berkeley County line. So having more in Jefferson County would be great. And um, having that as our, as a, you know, we have a lot of areas off, off of nine and three and um, 340 where we could be growing. Oh, and I need to say before my kids go to school, hey, they're, they're really excited to listen to mommy on the radio. <laughs> so before, and, and, and listen to your teachers today. <laughs> Smart. Yes, yes. Um, Good advice. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, we need a commercial tax base. If we're just focusing on our residential, we're going to be losing money. We need to make sure we have services. We have a huge EMS problem. Um, so we need to figure that out. And without having a balanced budget, um, that could impact taxes and we don't want that. So what is the best approach to the EMS problem in Jefferson County? Well, First of all, we need to have a seat at the table with the leaders. I think um, I met with um, uh, Ross um, at Shepherdstown, um, the Shepherdstown precinct, and um, Marshall Demerit, and they explained kind of where things they feel went wrong. Um, and there's been kind of a band aid on that problem. I'm sorry, you say seat at the table. I thought you folks took the seat uh, table to you. I thought <laughs> everything was basically around the county commission right now. We do, but we need to understand how all of the firefighters and first responders feel too. Um, and I feel, I think my impression from talking with them is they don't feel like they're being heard. Um, and part of the problem is we have maybe a lack of sustainability. They're fundraising in order to operate their facilities. And as a first responder, we should be ensuring that they have the money in their budget to take care of folks. So we do need, um, Mike Mood is also running for county commission um, and he is a volunteer chief for Middleway. He has brought in a lot of, um, he, he wants, to take the lead on this, um, but I do need to better understand. And, and to be fair, this is not my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. My area of expertise is land use, but um, this is one of our big problems that we have. So we do need to have a more uh, long-term sustainable solution. We need a commercial tax base that can um, allow us to fund appropriately. So our, um, our we have a huge problem, I think, in the middle way and on the mountain um, where people um, don't feel like we're do you, does the enough. county have the reputation, though, that it can solve this problem by recruiting companies to Jefferson County? Because from the outside looking in, it looks like Jefferson County is not friendly to business. And we need to get there. Yeah. yeah how, well, how do you solve that one? You need to hire good people in JCDA 
um, Eddie Benitez was fabulous, and she got promoted to our county administrator. And we just had a, a new executive director for Jefferson County Development Authority, uh, Krista Hoffman, I believe. And I've heard great things about her. I'm excited to meet with her. Um, we need to en empower them to make good decisions for our county. But um, there, if I may, there's two parts to this. And right. Rob was talking to... I think different than what you're answering. Uh, my qu I think what Rob was saying, how do you get the residents of Jefferson County to accept businesses? Because there is a long track record in Jefferson County of good businesses coming in, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of pushback by the residents of the county. Right, right. I think um, having businesses that um, promote clean energy um, and are not a strain in some in some ways I think would um, would make people feel better um, you know we've had a lot of um, uh, hot button almost or maybe it was made in a sense um, of companies coming in Rockwell of course is one of them yeah. um, there's a lot of uh, back and forth about that um, several years ago um, but they're actually able to you know they were going to be coal powered and they changed to natural gas and made it a cleaner operation so I do think sometimes when residents have concerns there is a middle ground that can be made and I think that in that case it was uh, which was um, you know more fair to their to the area um, and to our county but did the residents really accept it Maybe not some, yeah. <laughs> but we do need we do need more business. I think um, people in Jefferson County. I I would say the people I talk with, the majority of folks are not upset about having more businesses here. They just want they just want the right businesses here. They want they want the the places that they're commuting to to be here. Okay, but t looking at that, uh, you're you're competing with. The adjacent county, Berkeley County, uh, that has been very business friendly. Uh, they have the infrastructure in place. They have the railroad. They have the uh, uh, Highway 81. They have the airport. They have all these things that's going to be in direct competition right. with Jefferson County. The fact that you sit back and say, we want to do this, how are you going to do it? We have to give incentives to, to companies. And what specifically what are you thinking about? We need to look at, um, you know, there are potential TIFs we can do if they're bringing in a bunch of employees and a uh, long term. Um, we need to be able to work with them and work on their individual needs. I, I won't put a blanket statement out there. Okay. I will do this for businesses, but every business would have unique needs. Are you supportive of pilot programs? It depends. If they're not hiring employees and they're not actually uh, providing economic impact long term for county residents, no, I'm not. Fair enough. It. That's one of the solar farms. Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Asking for a very sweetheart deal. Oh not yeah. Providing anything. Yeah, a 39 year pilot yeah. agreement, yeah. which yeah. didn't make sense. That's right. I agree. Yeah. 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 So. Our guest is Kara Key. She's a candidate for the Jefferson County Commission out of the Shepherdstown uh, district. And, uh, Kara, this is your first time running for office, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. But you joined the Planning Commission, I think you said, eight months ago? Yes. Is that yes, what it was? April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was it that gave you the impetus to do that? And before this move to the Planning Commission, had you ever involved yourself in county or state government in any way before? Not really. Um, but I've been a volunteer my whole life. Um, I'm part of a non-political organization, so I'd like to leave their, them out. But it's a civic organization um, I'm the president of, um, and it's... A very positive thing. It's where you leave politics at the door. You come in and you serve your community on um, on on just needed projects, um, international projects. And so, I actually heard about uh, vacancies in the planning commission because they spoke to one of our meetings. Um, uh, it was actually Eddie Benitez um, and a few and another um, uh, lady, Jessica Jesse James, um, Jessica James. Um, from uh, the county and they had a bunch of commission seats that were open and with my experience in, in as a commercial appraiser I focus on appraising commercial and agricultural properties I've worked in conservation um, and you know things that are commercial so I have under have an understanding of zoning ordinance um, so when I saw the Planning Commission I thought wow that would actually be a good good position for me and so I put my hat in the ring. I uh, interviewed um, at the commission um, and uh, was ultimately appointed. And then from there, 
all of these things happened. It, it snowballed quickly. So that was April. And then I think early May, the, the commissioners were removed from office. Um, and then in, um, and I think in uh, August, um, it was uh, the West Virginia Supreme Court decided that that ruling stayed. And, uh, you know, the, the appointment um, of July 2nd from the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee for me stood and I was able to stay on the ballot. There are those who are sympathetic to the two commissioners who were removed. Are you one of those who would be sympathetic to their cause or the reasons for their boycott of the meetings? Um, to be com completely honest, um, I have never, I've never talked with them. I've never talked with Miss Krause um, before outside of uh, the appointment for planning commission. Um, she hasn't, you know, we haven't had any words. Um, but if I were to tell you that this initiated my passion to get involved because I felt like there was a lack of civility in our local government, I would be lying to you. So I do think. Um, if they had some points not showing up, I think that got lost in translation. So I think it's really important that if you disagree with somebody on the county commission, that you're able to s still come in and in a way that's with civility at the forefront, you have to do your job, you know, and, and you have to be there and you have to vote and you have to make your point known. Um, so, so I disagree with their methods that they went around it, but I will not bash them. I, I don't know them. And so my campaign, I'm not going to stand on the backs of anyone to get higher up. Um, I'm running a clean campaign, um, but I'm doing this for the right reasons. I'm doing this for Jefferson County residents. With all of this uh, vitriol that happened over the past year and a half, you know who suffered? Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm not doing this to pick a side, to, to, to pull anyone down. I'm, pick, I'm doing this because just like in my volunteer work I've done in the community, I want to build goodwill, and I want to make our county better. And I think I have, I think I have the right um, personality for it. I think I have the right skill sets for it, and I think I could serve well. On now, the surface, well, go ahead, Bill. I was going to say, part of your volunteer work, you're president of Rotary, are you not? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that was the organization that you, I That's think right, you didn't yeah. want to bring into yeah. this because they're not political. They're not political, and, and I would like to say they don't, um, not that the people that I serve with wouldn't support me, but um, it's a non-political, so um, Rotary is um, out of politics, so I just like to stay respectful of that. Um, mm -hmm. so. I can appreciate that, but the fact that you've been recognized by your fellow Rotarians to be president is something that you should take some pride with. Oh, I do. So back to the issue of the, the, of the two commissioners who uh, refused to attend meetings in this on the surface seems to be about solar. I don't know if that's actually what it's about when you drill down and get into all the things that are underneath it. But on the surface, a lot of it seemed to be about solar, which is a concern to many residents of Jefferson yeah. County. You've mentioned it yourself right. here. Uh, we've got about three minutes left. Yeah. As a commissioner. What can you do and what would you do about the solar concerns in Jefferson County? So a lot of it has to do with zoning ordinance. Um, so the removed commissioners, one of them actually voted to, um, to move forward with solar. Um, they created the text amendment. Um, so that's something important and kind of funny to bring up. But um, what we can do, and what I said the last time I was here with you guys, is the pending projects, you know, if they follow all applicable zoning ordinance, we cannot legally deny them. We would get sued uh, for millions of dollars. Um, so, but what we can do is change the zoning ordinance. Um, we could refine it, and in the comprehensive plan, we just updated it with a few additional, um, you know, the comprehensive plan is not legally binding, but it kind of shows where the direction we go to in the zoning ordinance, um, which would probably be done after this is adopted um, in January. But I would like to remove it as a permitted use. That would be what I would like, but that's, that's assuming I get three out of five votes. If we don't get three votes, let's peel it back and look at the zoning ordinance for for the setbacks, we have a 50-foot setback right now for um, a, a adjoining properties. Um, it, it broke my heart that properties in their backyard, 50 feet from their property line, would have solar panels, thousands, you know, hundreds of them um, in their eyesight. And with the um, vegetative um, buffers, it will take 10 years in some cases for them to not see them. Is it fair? To, you know, is it fair? No. Is that is that potentially external obsolescence? 
I would say so, um, where you're negatively impacting a, an adjoining property owner. Um, so I would like to um, refine the zoning ordinance at minimum. Um, topsoil has been a huge issue where um, the first project removed all the topsoil, the Blake Solar. Um, I would like to, uh, at minimum, again, um, maybe have a 10% of impervious area um, that could be removed. So they, they do need to put in footers and gravel driveways to get in. So I would, I think, f in a fair sense, less than 10% should be added into our zoning ordinance. There needs to also be... Um, 30 seconds. Okay. Well... So that's for that. That's um, I would like to ref understanding zoning in this case. Having the professional experience is extremely relevant in this election. So that's I'm going to put my hat in the ring for that. Um, experience matters. But if you want to learn more about me, it's Care Keys for County Commission. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, feel free to reach out to me. And thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you for coming in, Karen. Yeah, thank you. Nicely done. Thanks. You did well.